In this video, I'm going to go over the new dungeon, Spire the Watcher. In this video, I will try to give you the details you need to have so you can successfully get through this dungeon in clear, concise way, but not in a way that talks forever. Get to the point, give you the key things you need to know so you can get this done with your fire team. Once in the encounter, you're going to go through a little bit of just some territory. There will be a few ads sitting around. Then you'll see what looks like an old, like, sci-fi, wild west with tumbleweed sort of town sitting there with a bunch of vex. The other thing you're going to notice is that there are four buildings with a bunch of cables on the ground that are connected to a center area that this is what you're actually going to use to actually descend into and then up into the spire. To get this entrance to open, you're actually going to have to power it up. And so to do that, you'll notice again that there are these wires that are going back. They go back to a power source. One of the things you'll notice, a power source has an arrow on it. They'll be in different areas in each of those buildings. Again, there's four of those. To power those up, there are minotaurs you will kill that will drop a buff that lasts for 30 seconds that allows you to power up the cables. This buff can be extended by five seconds by shooting the cable connectors in the right order. The order is to shoot the connector with the arrow first and then follow the connectors all the way to the end point in the center. Again, you need to do this for all four cables while fending off the ads. Probably the easiest way to do this is to have one person focus on ad clear and then the two other people People doing the cables on the left and the right. Pay attention to this mechanic because you'll repeat it multiple times throughout the raid. Once you finish this and you drop down, you'll notice that there is a, there's a catwalk in this area and then you'll go through some vents in the wall to find an area where there's several areas that go down. There's one in the middle that is red. There's a couple that are red, but there's one that's red and has blinking lights and that is the correct choice. From that, you'll enter a control room where you go into another catwalk to get to the beginning of a very large jumping puzzle. As usual, use whatever exotic armors and swords you need to use on your class to finish up the parkour to get to the next encounter. In this next encounter, you're going to be ascending each floor through elevators that are turning on by connecting, you guessed it, cables. Same rule applies to connect the power source, but in this case, it can go above and below the periods you're at, so it requires you to do some analyzing on each floor as you ascend of where the cables are, and they can be a little tricky. Do this enough on each floor, and you will get to the first boss of the dungeon. In this encounter, there are four platforms you need to connect to the center in order to damage the boss, similar to what you did at the beginning of the dungeon. Again, I would recommend one person for ad clear kind of in the center, and they can also be the ones that help kill the minotaurs to get the buff and then you would have two people doing platforms that would allow you to have one person go one way one person go the other and it would allow them to more easily keep track of which ones are done once you do that and again they're tricky like they were on the ascent up once you connect all the cables the last power cable you connected the boss will go to that area to do DPS. Now, this DPS will look very similar. It'll look kind of like the Garden Salvation, the middle boss. You'll have to shoot all the eyes out. Once you do that, he will start moving away from you and that'll allow you to do DPS. One thing to keep in mind while you're doing DPS is at the end, he will do a stomp mechanic that will bump you off, which is interesting for a boss that doesn't have legs. As far as loadouts, obviously metas are gonna change as these videos come available, right? But what I did is I did Wither Horde with Weak and Clear again for the season, which allowed me to reload my linear because I also use a linear fusion rifle for damage. And I use Brigand's Law. Again, the Wither Horde and the Brigands for ad clear and then the linear fusion for DPS. That weak and clear allowed me not only to reload my linear when I swapped, but also allowed me to weaken the enemy, which which helped with DPS. If you're struggling with surviving, what I use is my solo everything arc build, which uses Assassin's Cowl. If you're not familiar with it, check out this video right here. Once you're clear here, you're gonna descend quickly to reach the final boss at the bottom of the spire. As you descend, you will notice a lot of references to the zero hour mission. You will go through vents, you will go down holes, and you will carefully go down moving fans similar to how that mission was set up. You keep expecting Trevor to actually show up, right? Along the way, you will need to connect cables to also open up holes in the floor as you battle ads. The difference is you will run into red cables that require no order to them for you to connect them, but unlike the yellow cables, they run out of time very quickly. Once you finish this, you will descend to the final boss. The boss encounter and combines everything you've learned previously. You will spawn in a room with a ton of cables, both red and yellow. You will call the place you come in the spawn room. Then there's a reactor room where the cables terminate. At the beginning, the boss will spawn as you head towards the reactor room and two hydras will spawn left and right. Kill them and kill the ads and stay away from the boss, which is immune. There will be minotaurs that spawn and they give you the buff as before. You will connect the red cables that are five total nodes, including one above the door in quick succession. This closes the main door and traps the boss in the spawn room. This also starts the yellow cables which you need to connect two sets of to get to DPS. Do this as before, but keep in mind there are a ton of ads and cables have some weird connection points. 
Once you connect these two yellow cables, you're gonna to need to hurry back to the spawn room, out of the reactor room, before the door is shut. Once back in the spawn room, look for minotaurs and use them to shoot the red cables again to shut the door. This will call the shield for the boss to drop and DPS to begin. Again, DPS options and loadouts are probably the same as you had before. And then after this, you just rinse and repeat. Do the same activity over and over again, same mechanics, and then you'll finish the activity. So again, really fun dungeon, one I quite enjoy. I like the fact that it has more raid-oriented mechanics. It is a little simpler as far as like especially as we get up on power level it's going to be kind of hard to die in this activity and it'll probably be fairly easy to solo but the actual mechanics make this a really fun activity that's the video if you like it feel free to like the video subscribe to my channel jump my discord and i'll see you guardians in the tower